So, hi everyone and welcome to episode number 16 of the Witch Doctor's Guide to Service Now. Uh, today we're going to talk about how you can actually import data uh, with for example an Excel sheet through our record producer and take advantage of the import table and all that functionality. Uh, and of course my PowerPoint doesn't work like I want to do. There we go. If you haven't seen or heard me before, my name is Goran Lundqvist, aka The Witch Doctor. I've been working around with ServiceNow for a couple of years now, and it feels like I've been saying this one over and over again. But everything from technical assignments to customer to partner and so on. And I wrote down a few stuff on my lines, of course. Uh, the most fun things that I'm most proud of, of course, the, the three times there's now MVP and the new book that I have just released, or, well, it's actually a month now. Um, but more about that one in the next slide. If you want to, to get in touch, just hit me on, <laughs> there we go, on LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, whatever. Hopefully you're already subscribing to the channel. Uh, but enough about me, you see the details, I will mention the GitHub later as well. Then of course the book, I released it for about a month ago and I just took a quick glance and it's actually only five and that's totally, I, don't, I can't really understand it, but five books from reaching the magic, in my magic limit at least, of 500 or so books. So it, if you haven't bought it, take a look, read the reviews and hopefully it will help you a lot. Uh, a lot of my knowledge written down in the book and hopefully it will not stop you or it will stop you from making the same mistakes i did so but enough about me what are we going to talk about today it came from actually a question i got and what we're going to look at is how can we through a record producer allow the user to uh, attach an excel file and then upload that one into the data i'm uh, going to show you a little bit of reverse engineering just how do we actually understand how it works uh, then I'm just going to run a quick show how imports actually work with the import sets. Uh, I'm not going to go into depth of all the settings of import sets tables and transform maps and so on. Then I'm going to go through how you can actually set up a record producer to do this for you. And of course, we take a quick look at the new Madrid stuff with the mandatory attachment functionality, which is great to add in this particular case. So enough about the PowerPoints. We all think they are boring. So let's uh, take a look at today's issue. So what we want to do is upload an Excel file and put that data. In my case, I have actually just some test users. I'm going to show you a, a really simple Excel. You probably will have something else. We have first name, last name, email, and I have two users, Goran and my son Isaac. We're going to import these into the user table in ServiceNow. You can, of course, import it in whatever table you want, CI, users, incidents, if you would like to do that, and so on. That is how it looks like. So first understand, okay, how does it really work if we just do it manually as an admin? As an admin, I would have gone into import set, First thing you need to do is load the data. So I'll click on the load data. Decide, do we already have an import set or not? In this case, we actually have one uh, or not. Hmm. Ah, here we go. That one. Otherwise, just create new, fill in the label and it will fix the rest for you. Then we decide where is our source. It is, of course, the Excel file. Let's hit the test users. And then I hit submit. And now you're like, okay, where did that go? And what actually happened is there is something called data sources. This is where it ends up. And down below, if I sort on this one instead, uh, there we go. And the date is really, really weird. Where did my test? Ah, there it goes. <laughs> Sorry about that one, I've already done that. So basically you can see that the file that I selected is actually an attachment on the data source. We have a name and it might look weird here that because I just turned 
on a thing in the service now utils which is really nice you get both the label and the database name but right now it can be annoying so i'm just going to switch that one up if you're using the add-ons just go to settings and the show technical names and the zoom is good as well so let's reload it and you will see that it's on the labels now so basically we have the name you can see we have attachment over here we have the table name where the data is going into it's a file it's this format and we define which sheet are we going to use and which row is the header on oops then i have created a, a transfers map as well just to show you how we really do it so let's go to import sets if diff import sets if this has been the way we're going and we hit transfer map i have the one i created and transfer maps pretty much says this field or column on the excel field should go into this row uh, like I said, I'm not going to go through it, but basically down here you can see the email field on my Excel sheet should go into the email field on the target. First name, first name, last name, last name. It's really helpful if you have the same uh, database names or labels on the columns in Excel sheet, because then you can use the auto mapping where ServiceNow figures out which field should go where. And then of course you can set them. But let me just hit users so you can see that we is not cheating uh, as you can see created and these are the really weird ones i don't know why they have made this demo data but anyway you don't see any isaac or goran lundquist here so let's go back let's go hit transform you can have multiple maps and so on in this case we only have one i'll hit transform and it's done let's go to users i'll hit refresh and i didn't have any usernames but here is the two users i now imported and you can see the date matches as well let's just remove those one i'll hit delete there we go so now we want to do the same functionality in in the portal so basically we have three steps we would like to do one we need to make sure that the thing that the user loads up ends up in the data sources import set hard to say data and write set i guess uh, so we want it to be able to end up here with the attached file then we need to actually load the data into the table and then we need to run the transform up so those three steps are what we are going to do and it's pretty simple when you know how to do it uh, the bad part is that these apis is not well documented i couldn't read i found them for quite a while ago in uh, some uh, blog post or something like that copied it to my my precious OneNote, and now i just get used to it because someone asked me about it so uh, let's go to record producers and updated here is the one so basically i just added a, a normal record producer the table of course is the data source because that is the place we would like to to put the file uh, besides that i just put it on a on a catalog uh, service catalog and the category can help you just so you can see how it looks like good thing to know about before i go to the data is the mandatory attachment thing that is new in madrid you got that one under portal settings just check this one and i'll show you it's quite nice but it scared me once first because I didn't really understand how it worked so but I'll, I'll come to that one as well let's see add was it uses to excel and now you can see this one is mandatory i can hit submit it will throw up an error saying hey hey you need to add an attachment so basically i guess you can have probably have some more text and so on as well but 
what I didn't get first was that I hit the try it. And with try it, the attachment isn't mandatory. And that's really good to know that this setting, and of course it is under portal settings, so it might be <laughs> me that didn't really get it, but this one only works in the portal. And I guess this one and this one as well. I haven't checked those one, but uh, probably. But what do we do? Let's go back to the script. So the first thing is we need to have the sys ID of the transform map. And that is of course quite easy. Just go to transform maps. You have the list. You can pretty much just right click, copy sys ID to fetch it. If you are in the record, I guess you all know. If you don't know it, you can right click and copy sys ID from here as well. And, like I said, you can run multiple, then you can add them here, just add a semicolon. Um, they are running in an order, I haven't tried it, but I guess that the first one is the first transform map that is running. And one way you might want to have multiple is, for example, let's say that you import uh, servers and routers. And then you would like to import the relationship between the servers and routers. So you have one import set one transform map to put in the servers in the Excel sheet, one uh, transform map that takes the routers, and then the third one will should only be run when the other two actually exist, because you can't make a relationship if you don't have the CIs. So for the last, you have a transform map to handle uh, relationships. So that is, oh, sometimes you would like to have multiple transform maps. Instead of running an import three times, you can run it in one Excel sheet and put it all there. So we have fetched our sysid. Let me do like this instead. I'll zoom in one more. Then you remember that were a few fields that we needed. So let's take a look at them. Data sources. That one. And let's take this one. And this one is even better because this is actually an example I did uh, yesterday just to test it. You can see that the name is admin user report at and a date. Just since I wanted to have a unique name. Uh, this is this row. Current.name, get the username, add this text and then add the time that the user press send. Or submit, sorry. Then we have the, the table name. Let me flip back to the import set. Not that one, this one. We need to set that one. Which table are we going to load, want to load the data into? Uh, next one is the attachment method and the type and the file and the two rows. We have the file method here, the type here, the format and the sheet numbers. Those are the ones that I am setting here as well. And then I actually create the record now. And the reason I'm using the insert, because you're thinking perhaps that, hey, the record producer is doing the insert. This is because I need to have the data source in place to be able to run the rest of the stuff. In the end, we actually have bought the record producer, so I don't get a duplicate uh, record in the data source. What you can do if you want, you can stop here, and then you can run all this other code as a scheduled job perhaps. Perhaps it's a, a bigger import than my two users that you're going to import. So you have a scheduled run. But then the user needs to wait before the data they actually uploaded is accessible. So that is why we use the insert here. Now, next time is we actually need to take the file and put that into the import set. And this is where we get to the undocumented stuff. And I can't really explain more than what you see, so let's go through it. We, we use an API called Glide Import Set Loader. We say, okay, load get import set gr, Glide Record, I guess. And that is, of course, the current record, the data source record. Then we say load that into the import set. And by that, we actually take this variable and add the current variable. No clue what they're doing, but it's being loaded into the data source table at least. So, and then we update our uh, loader but that the state is loaded. So now we have the data in the import table. 
Now we need to run it with that transfer map that we have defined on row one. So there we go, next undocumented uh, API. And if you find documentation, please let me know so I can uh, point at that one and read about it. So we use something called glide import set transformer worker. So that's quite a, a long name, but we take the sysid or the record from this one, the glide record, and we send into the transform maps that we want to run. Then we do something called set background true. I guess that means run in the background so the user doesn't need to wait. But then again, I have no clue. <laughs> I haven't tried to set it to false to see what's happened either. And then we start to transform. And this is actually basically it. So when you know this code, suddenly it gets a lot easier to do things like this. But of course you need to find it, remember it and have it stashed away in OneNote or something like I did. So let's test it. We'll go to the portal. Let's add my test user 2, which is somewhere. I don't really remember which names. That would be fun. Uh, and just hit submit. And now we're wondering, OK, what happened? We get back to the catalog because that is my definition here. Redirect the catalog. But let's go to users and see what happened. Refresh list. Hey, look, I got my daughter Louisa here and we got a uh, Peller. That's a kind of a, a strange name. Well, it's my imagination that uh, went haywire, I guess. So here you can see how easy to set up a record producer, allow the user to add an attachment and put it in. Of course, I would recommend putting perhaps in a little bit more uh, checking is it an Excel file perhaps and all those things but that's up to you to to make it even more advanced this at least would get you going and going good I guess so thank you for watching and see you around